Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to London's fragrant Camden Town. This is Cheap Show. My name's Eli Silverman, and here's your other host. It's Paul Gannon. Hello. All oh, right. Well, the Economy Comedy Podcast for your ears. My name is Paul Gannon. That is Eli Silverman, and we like to describe each other in the best way possible, to get an idea of what we're like. So I'll begin. Eli Silverman, from the bogs of the primordial soup, crawled a feral creature, covered in fat, booze, and hair. He crawled out with the last energy he could muster, slid across the ground like a dirty, fat snake, and and figured out how to use rudimentary tools. Those tools crafted a house, and in that house he built himself a pub. And in that pub, he gave himself all the drinks he could with the bar snacks appropriate for said drink. After that, he fashioned himself a smock made out of the skins of all those who crossed him. Those who died worshipped him. He came from that venue tonight, dressed like a feral fucking monster to appease you tonight. And that man has one name. And that name is Eli Silverman! Right. Yeah, good. Good use of the word feral. I'd used it twice. Three times. Yeah, yeah, three times. Do you want to say it again? Feral. Just say it again. Feral. Unimaginative. Twice. Right, good. <laughs> Have you got one for me, then? Yes. Paul. Yes. Before time. Yes. There was an annoying essence around the universe. It coalesced around a dark star. Ganon. Nice there- mood Shut yeah. up. All right. Eventually, after eons, and visiting Giacomo for its clothes, it it became the planet Paul Gannon, a sentient planet whose denizens were all happy and all ate chewy gums. (laughs) I'm as fascinated as anyone else where this is going to go. Eventually, the denizens became... Intelligent, and they built structures to their lord and planet god, Ganon. Mm. And these structures were massive phallic temples, spurting black gold upon the many denizens. Have I said denizens already? Yeah, <laughs> unimaginative twat. And, and born from this was the Ganon. He goes across the universe, slightly annoying his friends. And that's Paul Ganon. Fuck it. So you're on Thank form you. tonight. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I thought good. that was pretty good. Yeah. Nice. So you want to know about my week? Okay. Yeah. My week was good. I decided to invent some board games, modern them up for today's contemporary times. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so I've got a few board games. I just want to run past you if that's all right. All right. All right. So one I've built is um, it's, it's a game for people who have an eating disorder and also uh, think they've got every disease under the sun. What, what they think they've got diseases? Yeah. And they've it's got called, an eating disorder? Yeah. What's it called? It's called Hungry Hungry Hypos. The next one, it's, uh, it's a little game where you've got to use uh, tweezers on, on this Jimmy Savile cardboard cutout. Yeah. And you've got to take out things like, you know, Jim will fix it badge. His gold chain. Without setting off, uh, you know. cigar, is there? Yeah, you got, without setting off the yeah, alarm. What's that called? That's called Operation U Tree. <laughs> <laughs> he likes it. That was my one. That's why I know, I yeah, fuck it. you. <laughs> I've got another one as well where oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's a point scoring game with dice, but all the dice have swastikas on. And when you win, you shout, Nazi! And what's it called? Nazi. Right. <laughs> and finally, it's a Scouse murder mystery game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just called They Cluedo, Don't They Do? That, you didn't really invent those games, did you? I didn't know they're all puns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And not very good ones. Yeah. But th- that's what my week was. What about your week? How was yours? Well, it's funny you should ask, because uh, this week I had, on Monday, a bit of a religious epiphany. I was lying in bed, Yeah. and this light was shining, Yeah. and it said, Eli. It was speaking. It said, Obviously. Eli, uh, Eli, you've turned down the wrong road. You right. must now become what you wanted to be when you were a child, a marine biologist. And so I enrolled in this marine biology course the next day 
they said they're desperate for marine biologists. You know, with the the whole world, the, all the world's oceans under threat, they need people yeah, to to be marine biologists. And you know, I've got some A levels. They said, okay, fine, we'll fast track you. Okay. So I did it. Did the whole course on Wednesday, and I'm going <laughs> the whole. Four year course. Yeah, they on they, Wednesday. They cram it now. They right, cram okay. it. They've got techniques. An um, intensive. It's an intensive course. Right. So, I'm a, I'm a qualified marine biologist now, and um, then, uh, then uh, I, I went to the Seychelles and I was swimming with do- dolphins and <clears throat> snorkel fish. Right, snorkel fish. Yeah, snorkel fish. Dolphins and snorkel. Listen, fish. I don't need to explain it to you. I've got the knowledge. Right, snorkel fine. fish I... and dolphins. Stand corrected. And so that was my week, and then I flew back, and uh, I'm writing a paper on the erosion of, uh, of the biodiversity in the Bermuda Triangle area. Wow. And just to clarify, that all happened last week? No, it didn't. Right. What did you do? I just sort of slept in, went to the call centre, Right. got really depressed, Right. cried in my booth, said something inappropriate to a lady at work, Right. Uh, was asked to leave, Okay. got so drunk I vomited, then... Not much on the second day. and uh, <laughs> That was just Monday. That was Monday. Uh, right. Also, the time travelling. Did I tell you about that? No. 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 I discovered a time travelling fish. <laughs> Did you? Yes. Time travelling fish. You have to put it on your genitals and then you can go through space and time. I'm it's beginning... called the Winkle Wankle Rotary Fish. I'm beginning to think this is just an excuse for you to stick fish on your cock. It is. Yeah, good. I, listen, but listen, mate, I'll tell you something. I don't need a fucking excuse to stick fish on my cock. <laughs> That's unfortunate and horribly true. I've got four fish on my cock right now. That and ex- they're cod. Cod are big. One's a tuna. It might be a cod or a tuna. It's hard to tell. Have you quite finished being weird? <laughs> <laughs> what? You wanted me to fucking say something? Get on with the show. Get the guest on. I'll right. Fu- all right, I will then. Eli Silver and everybody, round Thank of applause. You. Thank you, everyone. I honestly don't know if that's a diary entry or a suicide note. It's, it's very close. Right, so, welcome to the show, everybody. That's us set up. Now for our special guest. You may be aware of him off the internet. Is that where he lives? Off yeah, on the, he off lives on the internet. Oh, yeah? He lives on a little planet called YouTubes. YouTubes? On the internet. Oh, yeah? On the interwebs. And he is a denizen of that environment <laughs> and he, what he is it's that word again De- what denizen tonight's episode is Sponsored brought to by- you by the word denizen and feral <laughs> yeah good and he's decided to grace our stage tonight with his presence so please give all the applause you can with all the hands you've got on you to the amazing ashens everybody <laughs> Yeah, you do the intro. Ashens, thanks for coming on the show tonight. Uh, you are most welcome, don't mention So, uh, so we do our inter- a little bit of interview. We're doing a little, we'll do a little bit of an interview. <laughs> to just... I thought you were going to stop talking for a bit, Paul. <laughs> Whilst you reconfigure the fucking software in your brain and mouth. I know, yeah. it's not working. Right. I'm having a get serious it, case it, of Ganon as yeah, tonight. Get it Try turning it off and turning it back on. Yeah, yeah indeed. Might... Let me just do that. <laughs> 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 right. So wait on me booting. It's a it's it's a laptop, so it takes a while. Burung, Java. <laughs> Is this some right, computer-based a... fucking humour? I don't something? know. Christ. The best I've got. Oh. Right, go on. Sorry, go on. Start again. Oh, <laughs> start the whole show again. <laughs> no, from the top. Right, Ladies yeah, and gentlemen, okay. welcome to the Uncleakable. Oh, no, we'll, that, we'll, that we'll do it properly. Okay. So. so thanks for thanks for coming on, Ash. And um. We uh, Thanks for not telling my agent I was doing it. Uh, no, don't worry. Don't worry. That's the noise of me bribing you. Uh, that, is that the international sound of bribery? I, I don't like yes, the it sound is. of your bribes. So I everyone, don't want just to from now on, the international sound of bribery is... Yes. Yeah. It is in my world. Thank you. So thanks for coming on. And uh, uh, we'd like to start off uh, with our guest by having a little informal interview. Are you okay with that? Okay. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll just uh, have some questions, see, we'll see what comes up. Okay, okay. Paul, you want to go first? Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. Uh, my first question is this. What is, um, what is the first thing you ever reviewed? The first thing I ever reviewed? Mm. Not for your website, I mean just in general. Just what in general. What was the first thing you had an opinion on? I think it was the doctor who delivered me in the hospital. And how did you rate your doctor? Very low. He was short, he was bald, and he smelled funny. It was Eli. <laughs> Eli was your doctor. Was he feral? Fuck off. <laughs> he, 
He was a feral denizen, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I figured out what the title of the show is going to be called. <laughs> I'm not bald. I might yeah. be slightly thinning, but you... <laughs> slightly. Which is accentuated by me holding my hair back in a band. But yeah, you also have Recido. So... This is not meant to be about us, Paul. It's not. Right. So, well, you ask your question, then. Okay, I've got a right. question. I've got a question. Next question. Ah. So, what's the worst thing that you've put in your mouth? Mm, that's a nice question. The, the answer is probably a 12-year-old hot dog. A 12-year-old hot dog. A 12-year-old tinned hot dog from Quicksave. The amazing thing is, people aren't nauseated until you say quick save. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is the that is the trigger. Factor, so, isn't twelve it? years ago, this do- hot dog was probably not suitable for human consumption to begin with. No, no. no it, the ingredients. Well, they spelled ingredients wrong on the tin, so that was a bad start. <laughs> Did they? Yeah. <laughs> so the ingredients included beef, pork, chicken, things that shouldn't be in a frankfurter, and yeah. <laughs> They Badger's beak. Badger's what? <laughs> I don't know. Well, Hen's cot. Hen. Yeah. Pig's thought. Did it have powdered crow? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Wouldn't surprise me. And so with this, was this in brine of some sort? It was in brine, yeah. And did, so, you, uh, did you heat up the, the dog? We did. We removed it from the brine, as you do with any 12-year-old hot dog, obviously. Yes. Uh, plopped it into a nice saucepan full of boiling water. Prayed to many gods. <laughs> um, <laughs> cut it into small pieces. Put small pieces in our mouths and then really fucking regretted it. God. It was not good. It crumbled to a horrifying, rotten-tasting dust and coats your whole mouth and throat. But still better than Burger King. (laughs) But only just. Your question, Paul. Right, next question. Um, Okay, this is a personal favourite. What is your favourite hot meal? My favourite hot meal? Mm. Horse. I can't argue with that. Okay, my one's a good, strong so answer. That's the worst thing you put in your mouth. What's the worst thing you've been sent in the post? Oh, God. Um, a taxidermy duck once. That was unpleasant. It was a <laughs> dead duckling, fully on taxidermied, and it was most unpleasant. I, that sort of thing creeps me out, so I didn't want to be seeing that in a box. Probably the worst thing, though, was a pair of very um, realistic prosthetic latex feet, human feet. Ooh. Are your fans serial killers? Yes. Because that's the kind of stuff I'd expect, like, John Doe from Seven to deliver to someone. <laughs> <laughs> really disturbing. What's in the box? Return address, Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was not nice. I think the idea was to scare the shit out of me when I opened it, because obviously you don't realise it's fake. It's like, ah, body parts. And that kind of worked, <laughs> actually, yeah. You've heard of worse? <laughs> no? No, no, not oh. yet. Oh, good. Your, your ears are not working. My either, ears aren't yeah. working. My brain isn't working. My eyes are failing me. And my penis is snapped. Is that really... <laughs> so it's your... <laughs> should have put a fish on it. <laughs> I should have put a fish on you it. You should. It's like Beyonce said. If you like it, then you should have put a fish on it. My question. Yeah. What's the worst thought you've ever had? This one. Elaborate. <laughs> you don't want to know. You I do. Know. I do want to know. I want to know what, Mate, what the dirt is. Don't. There's no... There's no I want to know what the dirt is. Why do you want to go dark with I want to go there's with no... the worst thought. Well, no, there's no point because we've seen him put... Old dog in his mouth. No, we, not we've a, seen him. Hot unra- dog. I would like to make that distinction. A hot dog. Oh, it might as well be dog though. Unwrap. <laughs> we've heard him unwrap some feet, and, uh, <laughs> and now I want to see inside his filthy fucking brain. Right. So, this is slightly troubling me right now. What's the worst thought you've ever had? The darkest. The lowest. Go on. <laughs> Don't know if I should say this, but. I once considered seeing the Justin Bieber movie. Ooh. Oh, my. Oh, right. Right, this right, right, interview's over. Inter- I, I was going to ask my last question. All right, go on. It's the last question. Go All on. right, my last question is, um, have you ever heard of pa- Big Papa Hamster? Paul, no. What? You're not doing that. We don't talk about Big Papa Hamster. Mate, I've got to ask everyone, because it can't just be me. <laughs> the first rule of Big Papa Hamster is... Don't. We do not talk about But I need Papa to know. Hamster. Paul, I, seriously, I've We've gotta... been over this, okay? Yeah. Your imaginary paedophile rapping Big Papa Hamster friend yeah. is not real. It, well, then you explain the three years of therapy I had to go through because of Big Papa Hamster and his nighttime calling. You Could... invented Big Papa Hamster as a way of covering up your trauma. So you've not heard of Big Papa Hamster then? No. <laughs> Don't say ah oh, to Big Papa Hamster. Seriously, 
<laughs> yeah, just make him angry. It's it's a running joke that's still failing to land episode <laughs> by episode. So um, I'm going to move swiftly on. Move on. All right. In that Clever case, Hamster. the interview is over. You can now relax. We're going to play. We're going to play a little game now. Oh yes, by all means, stretch out. It's a couch. You can. This do. This isn't actually very comfortable. Ah. Uh. My bad. Then, then maybe don't do that. Okay, so we're going to play a game. Uh, this game is called Naughty Toys. Right? A simple premise is this. I'm going to ask Eli and Ash, and you can all play as well if you think, think you know. I'm going to give you a title of a toy. And all you've got to do is tell me what was wrong with it and maybe why it got recalled. Not all of these were recalled, but all of them were weird in some way. So are you ready? This is my specialist chosen subject. Oh, yeah, I, also, I also am ready. All right, good. Are you sure? Number yes. one. The Holiday Toy Mouse. What was wrong with the Holiday Toy Mouse, Eli? Uh, it came out on a weekday. <laughs> it wasn't on holiday. It was just like an ordinary day. Everyone had to go to work. What you're saying was the toy failed because of scheduling problems. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck's that? A Holiday Toy Mouse? I've got to go to work. <laughs> I'm not getting that for my kid. It's not his holiday. He'll think it's holiday. And he'll, he'll pretend he's sick. Right. Ashens, what? what would you think is the problem with this? The problem was it was actually just Hitler with false whiskers painted on. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Does anyone actually know in the audience what they think the problem with the holiday toy mouse was? Maybe you squeeze it, it's If you squeeze it, it's back tink. No. If it did that, it would have been better than what actually was the problem with it. The problem was this, I'll tell you. Due to dodgy recording quality inside the mouse, the speaker and the voice the guy put on made the words jingle bells actually sound more like the word paedophile. <laughs> so, so it was a tiny little mouse that when you turned it on went, paedophile, paedophile. Sounds like Big Papa Hamster. It's not Big Papa. <gasps> should... Holiday toy mouse. Yes. Must know Big Papa Hamster. They must be best mates. I, th- there's something to this. There's some... You should buy up all the old stock. Yeah. Just uh, buy some stickers, rebrand it. Big Papa Hamster. Pedophile. I, I don't know if that's, <laughs> that's going to be the best thing for me to do with my career. Well, I'll be honest with you. You do better than this. Fucking hell. Right, up. good. Next one. Next one. The next toy on the list. Flubber. Eli. Why was Flubber taken Flubber off the shelves? Flubber was from that movie, right? It was based on that movie. Did, did it contain naturally occurring psilocybin? I don't know words you said. Psilocybin is the active, uh, psychoactive ingredient in magic mushrooms. No. No, it didn't contain that. Again, oh, that that's would be much isn't better it? than the actual answer. Well, that would, that would improve the holiday mouse. Take some flubber. <laughs> watch the mouse. the mouse. And watch then... the fucking mouse say paedophile. It's a, you have an epiphany. Become a marine biologist, maybe. <laughs> Call back. <laughs> <laughs> right, Ashens, what do you think was the problem with flubber? Do you know? I think the uh, colourant in it stained children. But it didn't stain their hands. It stained their souls. Ooh. And it basically left them as uh, soulless husks, as if they'd lived in Great Yarmouth for some time. <laughs> Actually, what was the problem with it was flubber caused rashes, skin complaints, and in some cases, children's hair would fall out. So still better than the film. Still better than the film. And when they tried to burn it, when they recalled it, and they tried to burn it, they couldn't. They literally couldn't burn <laughs> flubber. And it sent tons of noxious smoke into the nearby town. Ooh. They were left with just this black charred mess that they couldn't kill. Whose job was it to say, oh, we've got all this goo to get rid of, lads, it's toxic, let's burn it? That's not going to work, is <laughs> it's it? It's not going to work at all. And in fact, I would have just fed it to him. You would have eaten it. Why? Because I'm feral? Yes. All right, next one. This toy is simply called Aquadots. I'll give you a little bit more information. It was a pen that when you squeezed it, laid little tiny dots that you could make into shapes and build structures with. So a little ah. liquid pen thing. So what do you think Aquadots? What was the problem with that? Um, it only worked underwater. I'm struggling. I've had no time to prepare, guys. You, know? you don't have to prepare. It's a question. You wouldn't go on Mastermind. I wanted to say something sit- fucking funny. Of course you'd prepare if you're on Mastermind. Well, yeah, okay. Yes, you would. What is your specialist subject? I oh, don't know. I just thought of it. Queens or something. Queens of England. Yeah. I haven't done any research. Don't know. Don't know. Pass. Pass. <laughs> pass. Queen Victoria? No. Thank you. You passed on 18. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> That's it. The claps are building. They're building. Whoa, Thank hey. you. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, that was a lame answer. You couldn't use it underwater. Ashens. All right, go on. What have you got for us? So this was a, a pen that you stick under water. No, no, there was no water involved. Don't listen oh. to that feral then denizen. Then why is it called it's Aquadot? In that, exactly! It's called Aquadot because it was like a little liquidy stuff inside of that when you squeeze solidified into little dots that you could make patterns with and things. Oh. Imagine light bright, but without the board and the lights and the pegs and just... <laughs> in fact, don't imagine light bright at all. It was a pen that gave out chunky beads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the best thing you said all night. Fuck you. <laughs> so it's like a drug dealer in a pen? Um, what? Yeah, if you want to think. Well, funnily enough, you're not... It, was I'll it? let you answer before I tell you why that was surprisingly close. Don't tell me kids could get high off the aqueducts. Ooh. You know what? I'm going to give you half a point for being anywhere near the postcode of that right answer. The right answer is this. It was a little pen. And when you squirted it, little beads came out, right? Yes. Those beads could be easily swallowed. Ah. Kids, obviously being kids, swallowed a lot of those beads. Now, here's the problem. Kids would eat them and sometimes vomit. They were the lucky ones. <laughs> the, w- <laughs> the kids who didn't vomit fell into comas. Oh, Holy shit. Wait, that's not even the horrible part of this story. It turns out the aqueducts were made of a chemical called GHP, which, when you metabolize, is a date rate drug. So basically, they were, these kids were falling into comas because they were eating date rape drugs. And that, for some reason, date rape drug is the hardest <laughs> sentence I've said all night. <laughs> so that, that was why it was, it was a Japanese toy and taken off the shelves and burned and they couldn't burn it and it lived <laughs> and it ran away. Here's a simple one for you. What toy? Here's the toy. The toy was called Dora the Explorer Aqua Pet. What do you What's think? What's this was- aqua thing? <laughs> Is that it, every toy that's got aqua in the title Just is, these two. is toxic? Just those two. Okay, fine. Ashens, so, would you like Ashens, to Ashens, you can stop there. So, Dora the Explorer, Aqua Pet. What do you think was wrong with it? Now, it wasn't recalled, but it was. It did cause a bit of an outcry. So, what was it? It was a. It was a little uh, plastic toy with a kind of snow globe, uh, a snow dome in it with Dora the Explorer, and you could press buttons, which would bounce around in the water. Right. Right. That was it. I don't want to go too specifically because it gives the game away. Okay. This can't be as good as the uh, date rape Pez dispenser. Um, no. <laughs> what is, though, in this day and age? <laughs> I'm going to say, if you press two of the buttons together, Dora drowned in front of you in an incredibly <laughs> realistic manner. And then her whole family comes around and weeps. Mourns. <laughs> God. <laughs> no. And she's from Latin America, so it's a large family. That it yeah, is. It's like, God, you wouldn't have enough food in the house, would you? No. You couldn't, yeah, you couldn't yeah, deal with enough. it. Yeah. No, that is not the right answer. What have you Balls. got for us? Um... It explodes and burns children's face off. So a thing full of water <laughs> exploded and burnt their faces it's off. It's flammable water. In f- fla- it's you- flammable water. No. Yeah. The answer is simply this. The toy that it came in looked like a massive pink cock. <laughs> it's kind of that simple. It was like a tube with door in and then two big balls next to it with the buttons. Uh. Were. And when you looked at it, it looked just like a great big dildo. Dora shouldn't be exploring that. No, no, not at all. Not for a good few years. Although, keep that answer in mind when I ask you the next ant question, which is, why did they recall the E.T. finger light? <laughs> now, you can either answer it or let them imagine what the answer is. E.T. bone. <laughs> or that, like that? I'm going to ask Ashens first what he thinks. So this is literally... A light you stick on your finger so you can pretend you're going E.T. Fun home. Basically, yeah. I reckon proctologists were using it as a light and not buying the expensive medical equipment. <laughs> and it caused a massive hole in the NHS uh, budget. Come in. I think you're just imagining ghosts now, Eli. Imagining goats? G- no, ghosts. I always imagine He's goats. He's always imagining goats. That's why I would never ask him that question. You fool. No, unfortunately, that is not the right answer. It was not a proctolic. Well, actually. Uh. Anyway, <laughs> Eli, what do you think the problem with the E.T. finger light was? Uh, kids uh, stuck them up their arse to see if they glowed through their belly. <laughs> e- no, they used it as a sex aid. E.T. bone poon. Mate. <laughs> no, go on, now I've lost him with that one. Yeah, you've I? lost him with that one. <laughs> Can I say that again? Yes. Now, that must be a unique sentence in the English language, mustn't it? What? E.T. bone poon. I hate you <laughs> so much. 
So much. No, the answer it was... It burned your finger. No. It the an- just looked like a big knob. It did. The answer was <laughs> it looked like a massive cock. And the thing was, it was basically a whole big rubber pink finger with a light on the end. But when you saw it in the shops, it looked like a sex aid toy. And it um, wasn't popular with the kids, but the mothers loved it. <laughs> I, I joke, but there was one I'd left off the list because I thought everyone knew the answer to it, but there was another one, a Harry Potter um, a Nimbus uh, 2000. Um, what's the thing I'm thinking of? Please stop doing that. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Broomstick, thank you. Holy shit, I just did the wanky signal on stage without... The- yeah, it was, a, it was a, a, a giant broomstick with Harry Potter on, but it vibrated. A giant broomstick? A gi- not a giant broomstick. A giant plastic broomstick. How, how big was it? I mean, that looks pretty normal broomstick size to well, me. Well, I don't know the official... Why are you saying it was a giant broomstick? All right, it was a broomstick. Thank you. You right? said giant in error there, didn't yes, you? Yes, I Thank did. You. All right, just wanted it to point broom- that out. It was a plastic broomstick that had a vibrating function to it. Oh. And the vibration function was where you just rest it against your groin area. And so it was pulled off the shelves, but a lot of mothers took their toy off their kids, allegedly, to enjoy it for themselves. And there you Quidditch go. Quidditch was never so popular again. <laughs> no, never. That might have been the best thing Harry Potter ever gave us. Um, okay. <laughs> I oh, know it's a, all right. Here we go. We got we got a few more. Okay, this is a very quick one. This toy is simply called Toy Pedo. <laughs> what do you think, Eli? A Toy Pedo is? It's a sort of bike, right? As in pedalo, pedo. P- p- no, but I'm glad you went there with it, and not the blatantly obvious suggestion you could have done. Uh, 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 t- oh, it's a, it's like some kind of nerf. It's a torpedo. Oh, it's a pun on that. Torpedo. It is a torpedo, yeah. But why do you think it got recalled? Because of the word pedo. To be honest, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so that was a quick one. Let's go. Oh, I'll go after. Actually, no, yeah, it was. Um, it was a torpedo, a little toy plastic torpedo that kids would fire from their mouth and eject across the room. And so the advert on the front said, "Lots of fun, the toy pedo to be fired directly from children's mouths." <laughs> oh God, that was awful. what it literally said in the box. Okay, um, this might be a bit easy, but this is just what was wrong with this product. It's called Baby's First Baby, Ashens. <laughs> What do you think that toy was? Baby's first baby. Yeah. So it's a baby having its first baby. You got it spot on. I reckon the problem was it was like a cube, but all its corners were on the inside. (laughs) And when you got two of them together, the non-Euclidean geometry caused reality itself to collapse. Let me just check that. No, that wasn't the right answer. Is it just because it's a fucking stupid concept? Yeah, it was literally, it was literally a toy baby... That was pregnant with another baby. But for added realism, the baby had water that would break. Oh, Oh, wait. And the baby had stretch marks. Oh. Uh, I'm not going to surprise anyone by saying that was a Japanese toy. Oh, yeah. Uh, Yeah. Did the baby inside have another baby inside Well, do you want to know an ancillary story to this? The the company that made this also had twins first twins. So it was a baby that gave birth to twins that gave birth to twins. Are you fucking kidding? No, it was a Russian nesting doll of inbred horror. It was the worst thing ever. Next one. Guess what this one's called, Eli? This is for you. This this toy was called Shave My Baby. So I have to guess what it was called? No, you have to guess what the toy was. Shave My Baby. It was a baby. Yeah. uh, Filled with Play-Doh and all little holes on its head. You give it a squeeze, the Play-Doh comes out. And you trim you, it. You trim it with uh, some some blunt shaving instruments that they give you. No, no, no. Would you like to take a guess? I've seen a picture of Shave My Baby. Yeah, it's a hairy doll. <laughs> yeah, it's simply that. It's a baby with hair all over it. It's a wolf baby. It's a wolf. No, but no, that's it's fucking not, cool, no, man. It, if it was like you, where it was hairy all over, then that would make sense. But no, it was a baby that just had hair here. Arse crack, groin. Oh. That was where the hair was. Was this Japanese? And you had to use proper... No, I don't know. But I'm would you like take to take a guess and say yes. <laughs> yeah, let's just say it was and smear a whole nation. <laughs> yep. um, last one on the list today is... Now, this is obviously going to be obvious, so I want you to tell me why it was recalled. It's simply called Black Oreo Fun Barbie. Why do you think, Mr. Ashens, the... Black Oreo Fun Barbie was taken off the shelves. Spell Oreo for me. As in the brand, O-R-I-O. O-R-I-O. What? O-O-R-E-O. 
How do you spell that's Oreo? the cookies? Oreo. I thought it was. You oh, fucking oh, oh, love oh. them. You eat a pack. You eat two sleeves at once. I do. I was Mate, nice you sleeve. once. You once threatened me with violence if I so much as looked at your double stuffed Oreos, which you spent fifty p on because they're at, at fucking budgets. The point being is that you didn't touch them, right? Yeah, you didn't even so know how to I, spell them. I won. No, Oreo is spelled R R O R I O. Is no, it? it fucking nope. isn't. To the internet. No, we don't have to go to the internet. All right. Look, everyone tell him. Oh, Thank Old you. MacDonald had a farm. <laughs> awesome. Fuck off, I don't like that song. I didn't play it for your benefit. Well, or... don't say that song around me. Old MacDonald had a farm. Do you know how many times I had to fucking endure that, Paul, as a child growing up? Two. A lot. They'd say, Old MacDonald had a farm... Eli, Eli, oh. Eli, Eli, oh. Did you have a fucking song that was based on some kind of very popular kid's song? Your name? Was there a song? Old, old Mr. Gannon lives in a house. Gannon, Gannon, Gannon. Paul, Paul, Paul. Paul, Paul, Paul. Paul, Paul, Paul. Paul. Did you? That was Pepsi and Shirley's song. Yeah, that was Pepsi and Shirley. <laughs> No. Okay, so don't mention that song. Let's move but, on. Come on. As my name is Gannon, some people do have a habit of, you know, that advert for yogurt. They mm, go, Gannon. ooh, Gannon. <laughs> wow. So, okay, we went off the topic. Black Oreo Fun Barbie. What was wrong with it? Well, I'm going to change my I name am... to uh, Eli Yoplay or something. Oh, you know why? Why are you calling me up? I'm very cultured. <laughs> <laughs> I could have been offensive, but I just did a raspberry. Oh, fucking hell. All right, okay, let's get this last toy out of the way. Black Oreo Fun Barbie. What was wrong with it? Is it the hideous racial implications? Basically, yes. Um, the reason why it was taken off the shelves is that in America, if you call a black person an Oreo, it means a black person who wants to pretend they're a white person. And so when They're you white to... on the inside and, yeah, black, on and the they're black on the, the outside. The opposite of Tim Westwood. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Exactly that, in fact. <laughs> the point being is that, yeah, it was a horrible slur. If you walked into Toys R Us and you wanted to give your child a, a really kind of enthusiastic, positive role model type toy, maybe don't get her a black Barbie that paints the idea that all black people should really be white on the inside. No, don't do and that. And so it was taken off the shelves post-haste. 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 And I think when I jump all the scores, the winner is... Ashens, because he's our guest and you were very mean to me. All right, sorry. So round of applause for Ashens for winning that competition. <laughs> All right, it's this part of the show where Eli now rustles through his box of vinyl. Why do you collect this wicked vinyl? Tell us more. Wicked vinyl. Wicked vinyl. It's wicked. It's wicked. Well, I collect it because it's cheap. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> What else do you want me to fucking say? I love it. I love vinyl. All right. Eli collects vinyl. He collects great vinyl. He collects awful vinyl. Tonight, he brings along his awful vinyl. Yes. So what selection have you chosen tonight? Well, it's My Old Man's a Dustman by Lonnie Donegan. Right. And why did you pick this? And you might think, oh, that's quite quite a cute old tune. You haven't fucking heard it recently. It's got some of the worst gags ever. Like dad gags times 100. Right. So there's 100 dad gags in it. No, to, to the power of 100. So there's a million. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, oh, oh. Is, it? It? Yeah. is it? Is it? I don't know. What's well, one to the power of a hundred? I don't know. It's yeah? the internet. It's one. <laughs> it's one. It's not a million. So no, it's got one dad gag on it. Your maths is lame. <laughs> and my speech, hearing, eyesight, and brain capacity. <laughs> I think we've all established I'm a little bit uh, tonight. Yes, right? you are a little bit. I'm uh. a little bit. Uh. So you're going to play. I'm going to go over there you're and play. Go over and and you're going to cover. Yes, I'm going to cover. Ashton, you could take part it's in the covering. We'll beatbox. It'll be great. Yeah. So uh, Lonnie Donegan was he a comedian? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Eli, sorry. Have you? Uh, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. In that case, put your ears forward and listen to Lonnie Donegan and My Old Man's a Dustman. Here's a little story. To tell it is a must. Very nice. About an unsung hero that moves away your dust. Some people make a fortune, others earn a mint. Should we all sing along? No, he starts in a bit. So. My old man don't earn Is this much. recorded live? I can hear I, mean, I think it is, and they laugh He's it up. Flipping. Skint. Yeah, they're fucking loving it. 
my old man's a dustman. Uh. He wears a dustman's hat. Uh. He wears gold blimey trousers and he lives in the council flat. He looks a proper nice. He's great big gold nail boots. He's got such a job to pull them up, but he calls them Daisy Roots. <laughs> Here are the guys. Some folks give tips at Christmas and some of them forget. So when he picks their bins up, he spills some on the step. Now one old man got nasty and to the council wrote. Next time my old man went round there, he punched him up the throat. Oh, my old man's a dustman. He wears oh, a, a dustman's hat. Violent, he yeah. wears gold blimey trousers and he lives in the council flat. I say, I say, Les. Yeah? I, uh, I found a police dog in my dustbin. Well, how do you know he's a police dog? He had a policeman with him. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty shit. Though my old man's a dustman, he's got an art of gold. He got married recently, though he's 86 years old. We said, here, hang on, Dad. You're getting past your prime. He said, well, when you get my age, it helps to pass the time. Hey! My old man's a dustman. Well, one more joke and then I'll the burn the vinyl. Set. He wears gold blimey trousers and he lives in the council flat. I say, I say, I say. Uh, My dustbin's full of lilies. Well, throw them away then. I can't lilies wearing them. <laughs> stop. Now one day we Please well, stop. You what the fuck was bastard. that last joke? My dustbin's full of lilies, then throw them out. I can't lilies wearing them. That's the closest you could get to mentioning underwear. Is that what that means, lilies? Yeah. They belong to Lily, and we can't say what they are, so therefore they are unmentionable, and they must be used tampon. I mean, knickers. Right. No, 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 no that wasn't the joke. No? That would have been better. It would have been better. Well, it wouldn't have been he's better. He's a police dog. How do you know he's a police dog? He's with a policeman. All right, let's come up with some Lonnie Donegan jokes right now. I say, I say, I say, my door is a triangle. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and? That's it. That'll do. I say, what, I what say. Do you, what do you call uh, an alligator wearing a shirt? Go on. An investigator. <laughs> Second! No! The second applause break! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! You killed the fish. Fucking feel it! Feel! I killed the fish. Yeah. <laughs> Why has Bugs Bunny got long ears? I don't know. Because he's a fucking rabbit. <sighs> Do you have any bad gags or would you like to retain your dignity? I don't think I can match that. <laughs> Fair enough. In that case, let's move on to the next part of the show. Now, this is part of the show. It's called The Price of Shite. What happens is Eli and I... I think the premise explains itself. The Price of Shite is a little game we play where one of us goes to a charity shop, buys a few items, and then we have to price up what we thought the stash was worth. Today, it's Eli's turn. So, Eli, I'm going to hold it over to you. What is The Price Ooh. of Shite tonight? Now, I want to know... There's two. We want to know the, the, the full price. The full price? Of and the whole... No, you want to guess the price of each item. Okay, so first we've got this. What is it? Because the mold. audience you listening want to, at home... Uh, describe this, Ashens? Yep, this is a jelly mould used for the making of shitty desserts that make you wish you'd never gone to visit your grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> What's it made out? Oh, it's a nice Madonna breasticle type coverage. That's it's a nice, it's quite a complicated uh, arrangement of uh, mould. You've got mm. two tiers of these sort of uh, cylindrical shapes and then it's... Then a disc, and then on top of that, you've got like a flower motif. And it's got a little handle to make it easier to uh, knock the jelly out once it's set. Could even be used for a small blancmange. <gasps> Ooh, Ooh. Yeah, that's very controversial. It's thoughts. versatile. Does that increase its price, though? No, because nobody can spell blancmange. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> also the colour. It's, it, uh, it's very depressing in that sort of grandma's house way, isn't it? It's yeah. uh, kind of that Early beige, plastic, 70s. Yeah, that 70s plastic yeah. kill-yourself colour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. Which attracted me to it. It's like, it's like the beigest of beige, beige, yes, egg it's beige. beyond beige. Beige. All it, melted down and used to make cases for gateway PCs in the 90s. Is it plastic or ceramic? It's plastic. It's plastic. Oh, oh yeah. that's going to be a lesser value. And instantly. also, I didn't notice, but it's quite grimy. Mm. <laughs> Which kind of adds to the authenticity, yeah. I think. 
It's are we a just... grimy old. Do you think it came in a whole set of accoutrements made in the same plastic? Probably. Maybe it was a set of different sized jelly molds, it's one bigger than the next. Well, how much bigger do you want a fucking jelly? <laughs> I want the biggest jelly in the world. Well, I want a jelly so big I can live in it. With two floors and an outhouse. <laughs> what, what's the outhouse made of? That Oreos? One. No, yeah, it's an you Oreo. Could, you, you could put a fucking sign up and misspell it, couldn't you? <laughs> right. <laughs> I can't believe it. You must have seen that word literally hundreds of thousands of times, you know? I'm pretty sure I copied it off the internet properly. Okay, oh. so that's our first item. So that's the right thing to do, copy it off the internet. Well, that's uh, what I've been taught, ever. That's okay, so it's a, it's a jelly mould. I don't know, it's a quite a... You, you, you wouldn't, you'd only feed if you had two grandkids. You'd only feed them... One jelly? Yeah. I mean, you that had... would only... It's like, oh, there's jelly, yay! And then you'd be like, oh, it's not very big, is it, Gran? <laughs> and then what? <laughs> then well, I'm disappointed, <laughs> yeah. I'll get half of that. Fucking hell, it's gone in a second. Oh. And it probably should probably put those awful bits of fruit in it. Oh, I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. I just... You know what I'd prefer? Booze. Yeah, well, obviously, yeah. <laughs> that's that's a given. But um, if she just get get the blocks of jelly, just eat, eat those. That was nice, wasn't it? Mm. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the only time it had any flavour. You know what yeah. I mean? Okay. You just get the blocks raw. <laughs> right. Just get the blocks, eat them. Fuck this mould. Seriously. Ooh. And then drink some water and sit in the fridge for two yeah. hours. <laughs> and then you go, Mr. Mr. Wobble. Mate, you can't tell me off for calling you feral when you talk like that. What? I like sitting in my pants and eating jelly out the box. <laughs> That's feral behaviour. It's not feral. Anyway, can we just price it, please? Yes, you can price it. I'll let Ashen start, because he's, right. he's, he's an expert on such what things. What sort of shop did you get it from? Uh, a charity shop. It is second-hand, believe it or not. Um, and you didn't go straight to the manufacturers. Um, whereabouts was this charity shop? Uh, in Harringay in North London. Okay, I'm going to guess it'll be slightly inflated as a result of that. So I'm going to say 30 pence. Okay, and Paul? <laughs> That's a high number. I'd have... I, you know what? It's a good piece. Yes. It's a classic textbook kind of jelly mould. 50? I'm no, hearing don't 50. help him. <laughs> the, the people on the telly do this when they ask for prices. You've got to make your I'm, own mind I'm up, I'm going to go... Uh, I'm going to go for 75p. <laughs> You're a madman, Gannon. Okay, next right. piece. Next piece. Moving so, on. So just to just to for the record, Ashen said thirty p. You said seventy five. Right. I'm going to model this. Oh, item number two is oh what? God, I've never wanted you more. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little How's brace. That? It's a little bracelet, uh-huh. and it has all of the members of One Direction on it and their names. Ooh. How's you, that? I is that, that fucking neat or what? No. Yeah, it is tragic. In fact, that is what There's you There's Harry. Said. Oh. <laughs> Give him a little kiss. Don't kiss Harry Styles. What about <laughs> Niall? Which one's Niall? Well, he's fucking did, ugly. Did you he? hear about what happened to Harry Styles recently as well? So, wh- no, he didn't get a fish in his cock. I that like would have been it. Awesome. These guys, they're on my fucking awesome. side. That's for the next no. album. Fish on the dick. Fish on the dick. No. Fish on the dick's my new catchphrase. No. He Hi, be- everyone. I'm Eli Silver. got fish on the dick. What what happened, Paul? Sorry, I'm hogging. I'm hogging. Oh, my God. He has... Does he? Yeah. Does Harry Styles have four nipples? Do you know that from personal is he experience? He, oh. <laughs> He's a, I'm getting bombarded by random weird facts from the audience. <laughs> I'm beginning to think reality's folding on itself. No. The story goes that he went to a party a, few, a week or so ago, and he got drunk. And the next day, the police were following him because he was driving a little bit erratically, and he was hungover. And he got out the car on the motorway and threw up. You think, oh, poor Harry Styles. Until the next day, his fans went to the place he was sick and put up a shrine. And so a big sign saying, Harry Styles was sick here. And there were flowers. You know, like when people have a road accident, they put flowers up and pictures of the dead person. That's what they did to Harry Styles. The world has gone too far. It's a sick you will we live in. On the plus side, Harry Styles' puke tribute shrine is a great name for a black metal band. (laughs) Okay, so there it is. There's your item. Not an antique. It's not, no. It's, this is brand new. Uh, but the build quality is quite, quite uh, sturdy. Well, let Ashens have a look. Let's see what there he you thinks. Go. Give it to an expert. Right, so I can use this to... Uh, it's wood. Identify Lewis ID, 1D, Harry, 1D-id. 
Id. It's Zane's Id. My God, it's a psychological bracelet. Half the stickers are coming off. They all look like pallid freaks. Do you know what you could the, uh... use that for? <laughs> if you were a Terminator, yeah, set yeah. from the future to exterminate w- One Connor, Direction, Sarah that'd be Connor. handy, wouldn't it? <laughs> you look at it. <laughs> to be fair, you'd be making your robots badly if they couldn't remember a single face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to make the biggest, most powerful cyborg t- known to man. Well, maybe but I won't give him facial recognition technology. Well, maybe his brain banks are filled up with how to kill people. Yeah, but if the killing people is one direction, surely that'd be the first thing you program into it. No, you just give them a bracelet. Oh, you fuck. <laughs> fucking saves you money. You know how much these coders cost per hour? Fucking hell. Right. Go down a charity shop. There you go. Those are your targets. Don't I lose that. I honestly think I'm going to have a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hmm. so uh, we want a price. We want a price now on that. Well, on the I'm RD wondering bracelet. if they're going to have put a uh, premium on it because of the popularity of One Direction or... Is it just grannies who haven't got a fucking clue who they are? <laughs> Same shop. Mm, I'm Har- going to go for 25 pence. Ooh, 25 pence. And Paul. Let's have a look at it. It's a little... It's. I don't know if the build quality is all that good. I think with a good hard tug, that would come a part of my hand. <laughs> and I would have Harry Styles all over my belly. Oh, if, God. Is if... it a wank joke? Did a wank joke creep out from between your lips? <laughs> yes. Yes, okay. So, I don't know, the stickers are pretty awful, it's a piece of shit, girls will buy it anyway. Because That's why it's called Price any- of Shite. Yes, well played. Um, I am going to go, you know what, I reckon because they know they can sell this to misinformed idiot children ladies, or girls. That's, the, <laughs> yeah. right. That's the word you're looking for. That's what I was fishing for. Yeah. Those tiny women, what are those, yeah. what are those tiny women called? <laughs> what are those small lady things? <laughs> <laughs> What's the word? What's the word? What's the word? <laughs> right. I'm going to say they could probably get away thinking they could... Uh, um, uh, I'm going to say 50p. 50p Ooh. from Gannon. What did you so, say? Ooh. Just to recap. I said 25. Uh, I so said to recap, 20. the jelly mould, Ashton said 30p. Paul, you said 75, right? Yeah. And then the bracelet, 25p from Ashton's, and you said... 50p. 50p. Okay. Right. This is high Now stakes. the last item. This is the... I've saved the glamour word. Glamorous item for last. Look at this. Ooh. For those for those listening at oh. home, Eli, what are we looking at? This is a beautifully rendered print <laughs> in a fetching pink frame, A4 size, and mm-hmm. it depicts a teddy bear riding a hobby horse. <laughs> um <laughs> And the artist N.J. Bouvier. Really? Yes. I, I bought it. his other print. The uh, cat atop a cow print he brought out. <laughs> Are they toy? Cow. Is it a toy cat? No, it was a plate. Oh, it was a plate, was it? Yeah, it was a plate with a All cat. Right, so this is it, and you've got the, they've got a funny murderous look in their eye, these, yeah. uh, these creatures, don't they? They've both got exactly the same eyes, making you think they're some kind of weird inbred mutant family. Um, so do you think the t- teddy bear's growing out of the horse's neck? Yeah, it's some kind of creature. Yeah. Who's yeah. operating this? There's God. some operator down here to <laughs> the bottom left who is, who's got it's that. It's just something from, like, from the thing at the bottom screeching as yeah. it grows out of it. <laughs> There's some kind of creature from beyond time here operating it in the kid's bedroom. Um, no, there you have it. There's a funny so where did you get that from? I got this from a different charity shop, also in Harringay. Funny story, uh, there was no price tag on it, uh, so I had to take it out, pick it out, take it up to the front and uh, speak to the proprietor. Uh, this is and, the saddest story uh, already <laughs> <laughs> I've ever heard. And I said, what's the price on that, mate? And uh, do you know what he said? Fuck off out my shop. <laughs> no. <laughs> he said, uh, oh, it's very expensive because that's a very unusual subject. <laughs> Yeah, that's I what he said. I that's the story. Are you sure you didn't go to the Saatchi Gallery? No, what? not the Saatchi Gallery. He said, "Yeah, that's going to cost you a lot because uh, you don't usually get pictures depicting a teddy, a teddy bear, bear riding, riding a, a hobby, hobby horse. horse." No, you don't. It's very abstract. And uh, so, yeah. yeah, okay. So it's very expensive. You've let that slip. Mm. Did you haggle with him? I didn't haggle. You don't have to tell me the price, but did you haggle? No, the price. I down? think he was joking, Paul, when he said it's very expensive. <laughs> oh, this is. Think- Obviously, a piece of fucking shit. I mean, <laughs> well, everyone sh- gets that, don't they? I mean, to you, yeah. but maybe that- there's something also about that color of pink. It really goes, you know. I've color matched these. 
Look at that. That is that's really depressing. You put those two colours together, the pink of the uh, picture frame Ooh. and the the You know what it looks like? It Uber looks like beige. Granny's house. The ra- it is Granny's the house. The last remnants of a child who died young and the mother refused to change the bed. You know, one of those bedroom yeah. kind of yeah. stories. And everything's faded and old and eighties. Yeah, it's and horrible, there's still isn't it? wallpaper on the wall that has grey and black stripes at a diagonal angle. These staring kind creatures. Of dark thought, they're actually. dead. They're animated. They're dead creatures staring. They were never alive. They were never alive. They're dead forever. Anyway. I can smell. I can smell the can teddy bear's dead fur. Wait. It's dusty fur as it rides forever Rise. on the hobby horse. The demon hobby horse. Oh, God. I reckon he's called Shelby. Because <laughs> he's got a little S on the button on the ribbon. That's how I've... Uh... So, Ashens, what's your price? What's your price on that piece of shite? There's... I got whiplash from that. It's like, oh, how depressing dark story. What's the price? Is that N Bouvier or M Bouvier? It is N J Bouvier. Ah, Bouvier. Because M Bouvier would be Marge from S- the Simpsons. Oh yes, yes. Because yeah. that is her main. And that name. would really put the yeah. price up. I think. Yeah, it would. If it had been painted by a fictional character, yeah. yes, from a long, long-running That's sitcom. The first thing yes. you look for, yeah. 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 Um. Well, it's filthy. It's shit. Um. Looks like it might give you tetanus if you were to actually run your finger over it. I'm gonna guess fifty. 50p? Oh. Paul? See, that, I, I, mm, I don't know. It, don't be so ridiculous. £2.50. You're full of crazy talk. Right. <laughs> you're, oh, you're brimming with folly Hang on, do you nonsense. think it's an auction? Are you trying to buy it? No, no. This, Mate, this if is you not, like it. No, no this no, is not the, cash in the footing. No, 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 maybe it is. It's not. No, maybe it is. Shut up, Paul. If you like it, you can get, two you quid can out get of me this. a drink and then it's yours, all right? Double vodka. That's the fucking price of shite. Double vodka for Eli's neck hole. <laughs> no? Yes. Okay. What's your fucking price, Paul? Um, <laughs> Let's oh wrap this segment up. It's, it's over running. Yeah? Wrap it up. Burn it. <laughs> choke on the noxious fumes uh, I'm going to say looking at it it's a horrible piece I'm going to go with a pound I'm going to say it's a pound one pound okay so we've got uh, the prices are in the prices are in so, and this is the way it scores you get one point for each individual item that you're closest to yes right two points if you spot on if it's extra point if you're spot on right so two points for each possible item okay. and then three points for the overall Right. Okay, does everyone remember that? I just made it up. Okay. So, so, <laughs> so even if I get all three wrong, but they match up to the right price overall, I still can yes. get three points. Yeah. That is the stupidest logic in the world, and I love it. Yeah. All right, good. Love, this is good. Uh, this is good now, yeah. I like it. Okay, so, just to recap. <laughs> so, um, all right. Let's go at the first item, all right? Yeah. Now, Ashens, you said 30 pence. I did. Paul? I said 75. Paul gets two points. It was 75 no. Is that 75 oh. You guessed. You're in the lead, Paul. You're in I'm the lead. I'm very proud of myself. Moving on to the second item. Sadly. It is the One Direction bracelet. All the members there. Uh, very useful for badly programmed robots from the future to, uh, yeah. to hunt them down. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Ashens, you're, you're, you were... Uh, 30? And what was it? I said 50. And you said 50. Ooh. Yeah. You said 75. You, sir, are not playing the game, but you would be right. It is 75. Ooh. So who's closest? You're equidistant, aren't you? I reckon we can share the point. So okay, you've got two and a half. Each. You're on half. You're on half a point, Ashens. You've got two and a half All right. so far. Last Ooh. item. It is the hobby horse bear combo from hell. Right. It's a practical item. It is. Uh, you can Practical. put that in your toilet. Yeah, you've you got a, a stain on your toilet wall. It's lovely. You, you can use I'd like to... to look at that whilst I was pooing. It'd be great. <laughs> oh, Think God. about the adventures. You can make up a little adventure they get up to. I don't want to know about Hello, any... Hello, I'm on my hobby horse. Right, can you just give <laughs> us the goddamn price? No. What was your price? 50p. Yes. Yeah? And what was yours? I went at crazy and I said a pound. The actual price... Two pounds. Whoa. What? It's got glass. It's got a frame. It's workable. Two pounds. Pa- Even I thought I was talking shit when I said a quid. So, you're closer, right? Yeah. So you get a point for that. Yeah. Your London charity shops are a hive of rip-off evil. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to London. 
Okay, and then what's your combined? 75, you said... 75... 50. 50, so that's £2.25 altogether. No. Yeah, one quid. And then oh, yeah, £2.25 25. altogether. Yeah. And what, what was your combined price? That's a good question, and I'm glad you asked. And watch me stall for time. As um, I try and work it out. You, you, said, now... you said 30, yeah, 30, 25. That was it. 55. Plus sort of 50. One pound and five pence. And what was yours? Two pound 25. You get the extra three points. Yay! Paul's the winner. Now, I don't, don't be disappointed about this, Ashens, because he has played before, and uh, he, he knows, obviously, the local area. Also, he donated them all, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> I mean, what yeah, I in... bought every single item and rigged it from the start. In, I didn't. In I Norwich, didn't. what would that... Would it would go, they would go for a lot less, would they? That would go in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> the, Nor- the charity shops in Norwich have what they call standards. Yeah. Okay, if anyone's interested in any of these items, for real... Um, there's something horribly wrong with you. <laughs> that, that's the price of shite. That went all right, didn't it? Yay! Yay! Right. Second, the penultimate part of the show. This is the part of the show we like to call Cheap Eats. Every single episode, what we like to do is buy knockoff products to feed Eli. Because basically, if you can't afford the name brand C or the name brand chocolate bars, the name brand crisps, we get the knockoff versions. We thought what we'd do is, because we've got Ashens here today, we'd relinquish control of this section to your good self and see if you brought along any nasty foodstuffs for us to suffer through. You forgot to bring any food, didn't you, Paul? Yes. Excellent. Good. I have indeed. I have some stuff from the land of Canada. From Canada? Oh. What we have here, I am reliably informed, is the stuff you didn't want to get in your trick-or-treat bag if you were Canadian. Oh. Or indeed still are Canadian, as I believe being Canadian is not a transitory state. I don't think it... No. I don't think it washes off. <laughs> <laughs> we so begin what? with molasses kisses. What? Or if you prefer the French, tire à la molasse. Ooh, so not only are we eating something, but we're learning another language. To uh, give you a description of it, imagine some sort of byproduct of making nice sweets that should have gone in the bin. <laughs> yeah. These are crap. They basically taste of cheap, co- say cheap coffee, cheap toffee and soap. Right. Oh, let's, oh, I am looking forward I'm to intrigued. this. I'm intrigued. Well, we're going to try it, and then afterwards, should we give some to the audience? Oh, yes. We've got plenty here to annoy everybody. All right. Let's, I'm uh, not going to have one because I've had one before and it gums your mouth up a treat, so I'll have to keep talking while you try it. Okay, ready? What do you think of the smell? Not good. The smell... The smell remind. This is not even me taking the piss. It reminds me of my granddad's ashtray. <laughs> That's what this sm- smells of. It's like when I went to my granddad's smoking room, he had an ashtray. And it, oh my God, it's like I'm, being, I'm there now. Your granddad Don't had a touch whole me, big room papa, for smoking <laughs> it. <laughs> Sorry? Your granddad had a whole room for smoking it. Yeah, he had a little How room. How rich was he? Well, you're not rich. He just had the room he kept his wife out of. I think that's what it, that's what it came down to. All right, I'm going to go. I'm All gonna right, I'm going to go in. for it. Here we go. Oh, he's only had a little bit. He's quite disappointed. I'm looking forward to it sticking in the beard later. Oh. That's going to be the best bit. Uh, that's not nice. No. It's, it's genuinely not nice. It's not nice. It's... Nope. No, it's this not. is all within date. <laughs> oh, thank God for that. One I should have asked that question before I ate arms, some. But don't worry about that. It's all got... Right. Um, it's got a little flavour behind the sweetness, doesn't it? And yeah, sort of cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is. is the soapy, unpleasant taste yeah, that's of it. molasses. Soapy, you're right. You're absolutely yep. right. There's a oh soapiness. Mm. It's weird. I don't like it, but I am still eating it, and I don't know why. Who wants one? Who wants one of these? They oh, are not very nice. Oh, we have many. All right. Let's dish yeah, them I'll, out uh, to I'll dish them out. All right. Anyone mm-hmm. wants one of these soapy molasses kisses? <laughs> <laughs> soapy molasses kisses being Which, another great band name. <laughs> Who wants one? Oh, it's like Panto now. Ready? Look it out. Woo. Woo. Start on the right and go at down. the back. There we go. Back. No depth at perception because it's too dark. There you go. Good catch. Okay. Whee. And let's get How's some let's get some Vox Pops reactions from the crowd. I don't know what could compel me to throw the whole thing in my mouth and eat it. I'm regretting every bite. All right. Okay, you sir, you're close here. Uh, what's your name? Noah. And uh, Noah. Um, What's your uh, your summing up on the uh, the molasses kiss? Have you ever stroked a dog the wrong way? <laughs> like that in your mouth. I want to know what you mean by the wrong way. It's like stroke. <laughs> you stroked that's a, a dog. That's a good so Didn't like it. Yeah, it's like nice. stroking a dog the wrong way in your mouth. Very good. What's your name, sir? Ron. What do you make of the sweet? It tastes kind of like how firework night smells. 
Ooh, that's Ooh, a very that's poetic, quite poetic way of using it. I think he may have synthonesia, actually, where you get all your uh, oh. things mixed up. Oh. No, it's not nice, oh. is it? Something's happened. Oh, dear. I swallowed it, and I don't think it wanted to be swallowed. <laughs> Who else says something? Oh, Who dear. Can... Who else? Oh, God, that, that... Uh, it's coating. I'm getting the mouth coating yeah, it's thing good for now. That. I only had half of one. It's just not dying. It's like... <laughs> It's not. It's just staying the same. It's Lazarus off- toffee. So who else? What about you, madam? I don't think it was that bad. <laughs> she didn't think it was that bad. I didn't think it was nice, but I didn't think it was awful. You've eaten worse things. <laughs> now, should we follow this line of inquiry? I think we need to bail on that one very yeah, quickly. Yeah, we're going to bail on that because you look like a nice lady, and this goes out as a podcast, and a couple of hundred people might decide you're not worth hanging out with. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Which is how it's made. Okay, so it's regurg- so, uh, yeah. with some regurgitoffee. The- it's regurgitoffee. Anyone else got What did you sing, madam? Oh, no, I oh, oh it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. No one wants to listen to that. Come on. Tart it up a bit, your response. <laughs> he likes it. He likes it. I don't know if that was tarting it up, but fine. So, this side of the room liked it. Oh, hang on, sorry. <laughs> I did see the gentleman at the side. How are you? Choked. How are you? <laughs> you got a bin? Have I got a bin? Um, well, you can use this plastic bag. Yeah. We no, have got a spit bag. We must have a spit thing. We're you all know, friends here. On my chest. Oh. <laughs> Why did I say that? I don't I've know. Got to stop. <laughs> I have got to stop just unfiltering the words out of my mouth and just hoping that they land somewhere. Successful. Unfiltering the words out of your mouth? Oh, what on I fuck's can't... name are you talking about, man? Right. <laughs> We've established... Oh, like, grass- unfilter some words out. Yeah, everyone says that. That's real language. Yeah. That's right. real English you're using there, Paul. Could. <laughs> oh. So, Ashens, I think Come we're on. done with that one. What's next on our What's cheap beats tonight? What's next? Well... This is a chewing gum called Thrills. Oh, there's nothing more thrilling than gum. chewing something. It also says peanut free, and I wish they'd put some fucking peanuts in it, frankly. <laughs> um, Eli, just read the. This is not a fake or joke product. This is actually a thing sold in Canada. Read the tagline under Thrills. Thrills. It's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I look Sorry. forward to this. <laughs> Sorry. Thrills. It still tastes like soap. <laughs> what? <laughs> Exclamation mark. It still tastes like soap. <laughs> but that implies... Is this that... like, did they have a Coke, Coke, Coca-Cola moment where they go, new Coke, and everyone hated it? And they had to go, oh, you know, we've turned it back, Coke classic. Is this Thrilled classic? No, I think it sounds yeah. like an apology. We're like, we're sorry, we tried, but it still tastes like soap. <laughs> That's what was missing off the front of it. I think this is what they call an acquired taste. Oh, All right, oh. I'm... I'm intrigued now. Let's have a crack at this. They then. also put it in high security packaging as if it's some sort of medication. I, 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 start. That makes sense. There you go, right. It's a cobalt bluish kind of colour. I'd say more, more of a purple. Yeah, it's a bit of a purple. Yes, yeah, so also correcting my language and my vision today, so <laughs> carry on with that. It's purple. It's a normal sort of um, chewing gum shaped lozenge with square corners and a curved underside. Are you ready, sir? Yeah. Then let us partake of the chewing. May God have mercy on your souls. It, now, now this actually tastes like my nan's bedroom. <laughs> it's got that lavender... Oh, my... <laughs> Where's the spit bag? He's getting the gag reflex. No. The thing is, it's not... Wow, that just doesn't taste like food at all. No. no. It tastes like... It tastes perfume. like soap. Well, it tastes like imperial leather. leather. Yes, imperial leather. It tastes like yeah. imperial leather. Because I put it in my mouth. <laughs> Look. Yeah, that is a good question, actually. Look. I need to explain something here. Excuse me. Um, God, that's, that's really wrong. Um, I'll tell you, madam, uh, how I, I know. I quite like it. I don't know why. Oh, uh, because you're wrong. <laughs> I'll tell you, madam, how I know what uh, Imperial Leather tastes like. Because you swore a lot when you were a kid. Because uh, you, go for a t- you go for a period, I think every child does, you know, of putting stuff in your mouth, don't you? You see, little children, before they learn to talk, they just shove everything in their mouth, don't they? Uh. <laughs> oh, sound Oh, here comes the, the gag reflex. Oh, I didn't expect that. It was quite... Oh. I'm okay. <laughs> Good. I'm all right. Yes, oh. very soapy. They're not fucking shitting you. No. no. It does still... Does taste... anyone... Should we give... It... We have... Can we give these yep. rest? Oh, by all means. By please, all means. Please. There are six. Who wants one? All right, one sec. There is a hint of Palmer violets yeah, to it. Yeah, absolutely like right. A thousand Palmer violets compressed. It's a very into intense Palmer vi- violet kind of taste. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I was looking for. It's the sheer strength of it. 
I think that's it's just really it. nasty. Yeah, it's a lavender. It's a but it's a lavender soap taste, isn't yeah. it? So uh, you're all chewing it. Ha- there's a lot of unhappy faces, uh, <laughs> but that might be the show, not necessarily the sweets. So we'll see. <laughs> what do you, oh, do you need? Who needs to spit? Would you like to? Oh. Would you like to spit, madam? Uh, spit was spits. it Ron? Ron, Ron, what's your opinion? Kind of like a, like a hospital. Tastes like oh, a hospital. Tastes like a hospital. That's what Ron. What's Ron said? You can taste the bubble. Someone says quite what, the ap- monkey. Ap- <laughs> <laughs> it does taste like a monkey. It does taste like a dead it tastes like a pet chimpanzee. Tastes like what? Musk sticks. What are musk sticks? Uh, are you Australian? Do you know what musk sticks are? No. My God. No, wait. This is this. That's is, a great word. Wait, we have an avenue of inquiry. Right, madam, come forward. Cause this, oh God. What's your name? Beth, and explain to us what a musk stick is and how it relates to the thing that's in your mouth right now. Um, they're both candy. Great. Anything else? It's pink, it's a stick, and it tastes like musk. And that's what they taste. I've got a that's pink stick that tastes don't, like don't, musk. Don't you dare. I fucking do. Don't you dare. Well, it tastes like fish at the moment. Not but uh, <laughs> What? It's a callback! <sighs> Mr. Yes. Silverman. Spit bag is filling up. Right, you can who, win the spit bag. You need to spit? Yeah, this lady I was just—it's de- delightful the way that lady said "musk," isn't it? Mask. I, I like the way we. <laughs> like what? How def- how deformed is that vowel sound in that word? Mask. <laughs> All right, good. That was awful. Come Thanks, to an unthinkable show. You'll be spitting into a bag by the end of it. <laughs> the great thing is, the notes. The lady wants the spit Sorry? bag. Nope. Do you know? Do you know how popular? Well, they're not that popular. I've mentioned it to two Canadians, and they both said, "Oh fucking hell!" <laughs> not in that voice. Canadians do not use that. They went, "Oh, so, out um, in a yeah. boot, fucking hell, man, yes. eh?" <laughs> Something like that. Was it? Exactly yeah, like right. that. In fact, I think I may have just spoken to you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> the worst thing is the taste does not go away, and will make your pint now taste dreadful for hours. Enjoy. So, does anyone out there actually like it? Oh God, she's leaving. You're not. You all right? Oh my god! I often have that effect on women. I tend to find. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Anyway, sorry for him. So do you? Um, (laughs) So who 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 actually liked it? You definitely did. No one actually liked it. She's the only person I know to wash out sweets with crisps (laughs) as a palate cleanser. (laughs) To be Um, fair, anything is better. Who had it? Did you like it? You did. Oh, you shared it. That is one of the weirdest products I've ever seen in my life. (laughs) Ashton, do you have anything else for us, or is that your lot? That is the lot. I don't think I could... That's fine. You have something, I've got something in my bag. Oh, shit. I've got something in my bag. Do you want to fetch it? For you, Ashton's. Oh. Yeah. And this uh, this, uh, was brought to us by an avid listener of the... uh, of the pod. Of the pod. Mr. Virgil Howe, uh, in his band Little Barry, was touring, and he picked something up for us. In Mexico. No, it was in L.A. He picked it up. Oh, picked it's it up close to Mexico, but it is a Mexican product. If you just hang on, cover for me while I go behind the sofa and dig it out. Okay, good. We'll do. So uh, we're going to try one last piece of food out. It's a surprise. I don't even know what this is. I just know he's brought it. It's very... Are you excited by this? No. Good. Uh, what uh, do you have? Oh, he's, he's, he's pulling out of his bag. What is it, Mr. Silverman? It's called Sponge. <laughs> sponge. <laughs> awesome. Sponge. Yeah. Which I think is how you'd say the word sponge in a Mexican accent, isn't it? Well, <laughs> it popped the way it came from LA. We don't need no stinky pillows. We have the sponge, man. <laughs> yeah, some sponge cake, man. I forget how bad your accents are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So we're going to try this, are we? Oh, mate, I'm getting a real taste of lavender still in my mouth. Anyway, it, it does. I don't let's know. just let's crack up, crack open the sponge. It's like um, French kissing your nan, that candy. <laughs> but taste of lavender, another great band name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Or uh, really upbeat kitchen sink drama from the 50s. Um, <laughs> this is produced by a company called Marinella. Ooh. Ooh. Let's crack this sponge open. I bet you've never said that sentence before in your life. Oh. Oh, oh can I have Now, a this is something I don't personally like. Can I sniff your sponge? Ooh. Come on. <laughs> I want a sponge sniff. <laughs> oh, ooh, cheap coconut and... Yeah. It's a coconut sugar. and marshmallow cake, and it... It does make it clear here it is artificially flavoured. I was going to say, it makes it clear it should not be eaten. <laughs> I'm like, going to get the sponge out. Again. I love oh, that sentence. The sponge is sticking together. 
I've seen biscuits like these in uh, Grandma's assortment. Of oh, look at that! Really, mm. it's like a kind Except of not usually with three D Battenberg cake thing. So there we go. It's a biscuit with four blobs of what I can guess is marshmallowy jam. Oh. oh, it's like a biscuit with an exit wound. What the yeah. hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That is the best description of a biscuit I've ever heard in my life. All right. Also, it fucking stinks. Did I mention are we, that? Are we going to try this? Okay, guys. Right, I've got the bag just in case because oh. I know I'm going to hate this because I don't I like hate, marshmallow. And I hate coconut. We're going to do we're really gonna, well Between this. us all, we're going to hate it. Since Eli hates exit wounds. So we're all <laughs> <laughs> it's not the best film. Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't have picked a more obscure movie to reference. Good, like <laughs> yeah. exit. Wounds. I was trying to think: is that actually a film? Yeah, like it's eighties video now. The thing is, it's I know Steven the title, Seagal. but I don't know who directed it, who was in it. It's got DMX it. in it, doesn't it? What that drug? <laughs> <laughs> no, that rapper. Oh, DMX, the who, DMX guy, with the pit bulls. Oh, hey, it's like that. Let hey, eat. exit wounds. Hey, let's eat the sponge. Okay, eat the sponge. Sorry. All right, so we're gonna take a bite after three. Well, one, I'm not fucking doing it. Two. It's my, it's my thing for you. All right. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, I love the gag reflex. It's full. Try not to puke. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, mate. Hold down the sponge, mate. <laughs> that is the worst gag reflex I've ever seen him have. It can't be that bad. Let me try. It, it's, it's just everything I hate on a biscuit. Yep. Yeah, well, Ashton's has made a stronger stuff. I have found from doing this show that my gag reflex is, is, is just... It's got a hair trigger. It's, it's... Yes. Yeah, I remember. <sighs> yeah, well... <laughs> oh, you owe me a tenner still. <laughs> <laughs> yes. In fact, it doesn't even have to be something you're swallowing, oh, does it? That was horrible. For example, last, uh, last show we did was the Halloween special. Don't ask why, but um, we did the Halloween special last time. I'd made Paul up, and uh, we had some fake teeth. Put the fake teeth in, start gagging on those. <laughs> well, I bet you'd start gagging if I just said to you the words, I'm putting something in your mouth. Oh, no, that would do a different thing All altogether. Right, okay. to me. Right, I'm gonna it would stir my loins. <laughs> I'm gonna... Are you going to try a bit? I'm... Eat go, it. Go, go. Oh. Oh. Oh, he shrinks it off. <laughs> oh. The jam bit's nice, actually. No. Oh, that's... It... Oh, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That couldn't have been more perfectly timed, the re- response. Oh, swallow it. No, it's not good. Oh, mm. he takes a second bite. It's not that bad. Oh, God. Look at him, That's disgusting. You're disgusting, you feral denizen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the best. It's incredibly what did you make artificial. of it, Mr. Ashen, sir? Incredibly artificial. Um, Isn't it? Just like chemicals and some really ancient desiccated coconut that no longer tastes of coconut. Which not is a good all. thing, from my point of view. What set me off was not so much the coconut, it was the biscuit. That soft, horrible, oh. off biscuit was just like, yeah. it was my body saying, don't put this in your mouth, get rid of it right away. And that's exactly what I did. My brain shut down my throat and it ejected it out of my teeth holes. <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, like a poet, a poet of the stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I consider myself... Um, a, 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 a Dardarist okay. of language. So, um, let's get a, a mark out of ten for those You know, three. Um, I once dated a girl who was into surreal art, but we had to break up in the end. Why is that? She had to resolve Dardar issues. I'll just go. Come on, mate. He's going. Is that your fake walkout? Yeah, a fucking fake walkout. <laughs> it pisses me off, your fake walkout. <laughs> <laughs> Eli, come back. Come back. You can't keep doing this every episode, all right? Because it pisses me off. So stop doing it. All right. All right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do a Ashton, come on. We no, all I do. can't be bothered to get up, to be honest with you. All right, oh, fair enough. Right. Okay. So, all right, uh, did, did, how many have got those left? <coughs> yeah. Does anyone want these? we got one. Yeah. Sponge for the lady. Sponge. Put it this way. I had the molasses thing to take the taste away, so. Don't get your sweaty hands all over it. <laughs> Sponch for life. Sponch for president. The jammy bits do get a bit... Uh... Madam, do you have a verdict? Come up, come up and give us a verdict. 
I can see why you don't have guests on your couch now when you do these bits. Yeah, what, what's you your name, madam? <laughs> I know I know your name, but for the purpose of everyone else, please. <laughs> <say. laughs> All right, fuck it. Jen, what, what do you think of the sponge that your husband bought? It's really horrible. It's really horrible. Right, good. Mm. Would you like to spit into the bag? No. Classy lady. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, we'll take. Well, we'll then throw, throw, it, in throw it in the bag. There we go. No one's going to force sponge on anyone here. Yeah. Oh, the jam Ooh. might be the deal breaker. Fully scientific wants to try every part. Yeah, because yeah. it's all artificial. You may as well be eating a test tube. <laughs> Let's bin it. Right. Nasty sponge. Right. What did you? Do you have some? What did you make of it? Well, like the consistency, they're all off. The biscuit's too soft, but the marshmallow's too hard. There's no flavour <laughs> anywhere. That's a good point, actually. Yeah. The biscuit is softer than the marshmallow, which is a fundamental sponge <laughs> flaw. <laughs> it's it's an it, what's the word when it's a contradictory snack. <laughs> <laughs> the sponge, the contradictory snack. I love that. Sorry. Was that in date? Oh, that's a good question, yeah. What's I think it's date? all far too late for us to worry about that. Let's no, be frank. No, it was in date. Mm. Mate, come on. That would be in date in 2,000 years. Hang on. Um, yeah, it says 2016. Yep. Oh, no, in date. Don't worry. Wow. We wouldn't poison anyone. So does anyone want to spit out into my bag? <laughs> <laughs> what was wrong about that? It was a completely blunt sentence full of fact. It was a nice sentence. It was a nice yes, sentence. And I, at least I got one out. Yes. Cheap Are eats. we all done? Ladies and gentlemen, that was our cheap eats. Thank you to Ashens for bringing that stuff along. Right, last bit now. This is the last part of the show. This is the bit we call top three. Eli is as a feral denizen of all things uh, factual, and he every episode likes to come up with three things that he knows are the best three things in the world. And today it's the top three what. Today, thanks for that introduction, by the way, Paul. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, uh, today, I'll be telling you what are, empirically speaking, yeah. and in actual fact, the top three toys of all time. Okay? Ooh, okay. Ooh. I'm so, uh, let's see how this goes. So, in number three. Is this the least popular of your top three? Well, but it's still pretty fucking good being better than everything else in the universe apart from the two above it. Okay? Right, fine. Okay. All right. That's loser talk. Yeah. <laughs> that is. Well played. Number three. Swap. Scratch and sniff Snickers. <laughs> Shut up! Yes! Scratch and sniff they're not, Snickers? They're not Snickers. <laughs> Scratch and Are you sni- telling me it's not a toy? You're trying to say that's not a fucking it's toy? It's not a toy. Oh, oh, fuck off. Of course it's a fucking toy. I, listen, I, listen, I, your inferior mind telling me what is and what is not a toy I will not have. I played with it as a child. It was bought for me. They were scratch and sniff stickers. They were designed for children to play with, to scratch. And it's an action of play. I play by scratching. (laughs) Ear. The moment your argument crumbled like a (laughs) squanch biscuit. Ear. What does this one smell of? Gherkins. (laughs) Right. Which was the best flavor? Number three. Scratch and sniff stickers. What's number two? Number two. Very simple building blocks. Very yeah. simple building blocks, or very simple dot 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 building blocks. My number two is very simple. <laughs> <laughs> Edit point. My number two is very simple. Yes. Comma. It's building blocks. <laughs> All right, clear enough for you, you fuck sake. Just because your number two is going to be some Ghostbusters product made of shit plastic that's just destined to lie in a fucking landfill site and kill future generations of humans by sticking in their stomachs while they're going across the post-apocalyptic landscape looking for something to eat. Oh, it's a Ghostbusters thing. They're tasty. Uh, uh, I'm dying. Holy shit. What, what drugs are you on tonight? Can I have some? <laughs> yeah, can we all have some? Yeah, Ashton, I'll hook you up when we finish the Good recording. Man. That's okay. two shows in a row now. You've offered drugs to our guests. That's the way you do it. Right. we come on. Keep all them right. sweet. Keep them sweet. Now, I think I'm actually having a psychoactive effect off the sponge. <laughs> I wouldn't be the surprised. Sponge effect. <laughs> Another great band name. <laughs> <laughs> they should have awesome. a little tagline on the sponge. Still what? tasting edible. <laughs> Still tastes. <laughs> Still <laughs> not. Has the gift of okay, taste. Okay, so that's my number fucking two, and, right. uh, and I'm no. right about yes. that. Okay, number one is an air ruby. A what? Ooh. Yet! See? A yet! Um, no. Can I get a yet? No, just because one person understood what you said does not mean your argument is valid, right? What air is, ruby. What, what is that? 
It is a flying ring. Which Good. Was That's invented that. in the early 80s. Yes. Because frisbees were out of style. Were shit. Are shit. They hurt your hand. They don't go very far. It's very difficult to learn the skill of throwing them. They Sorry. only go a limited distance. Your they turn. hurt your head if they hit it. They fucking, they fucking get dog spit pooling in it. Right. That's not a really so good reason. the reason but... why you don't like frisbees is because for some reason in your childhood it gave you some kind of childhood trauma. No, abuse. they're just a shit toy. As a f- Do you know oh, wh- what frisbees were based on? Yes. Dinner plates. Back to the Future 3 told me that. Not dinner they plates. throw them. Pie tins. Yeah, that's what it was. Dinner pie tin plates. Well, yeah, but dinner plates, pie <laughs> dinner tins, t- two totally separate objects. Either Get way, it right, okay? Either way, you know what I mean? Martin McFly So to be pedantic, <laughs> dinner plate, pie tin, Christmas tree. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fucking shut up, unless you know you're right, which I do. And they're the best toy, Aerobies, right? They've got a rubber ring yeah. round the edge, which is an aerofoil. Yeah. Designed by a guy who used to design aeroplanes, so he knew his fucking shit. And to this day, to this day, the Aerobee has the world record for a heavier-than-air object distance thrown. Okay? Th- thank you. Th- That's my third applause break. I think that was more of a, thank God he's finished, let's <laughs> applaud kind of thing. But surely, 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 the Aerobee is inferior to the Whizback. <gasps> oh... The Whizback was actually whizback manufactured is. by the same... Uh, it was indeed. Yes. and the, the same house. Yes. A and magical, think... sentient house. <laughs> <laughs> the Whizback was a sort of souped-up uh, boomerang. If I'm it was. Correct. You apparently, you would throw it. It would actually come back. Yes. All Just right. like my dog. Also... <laughs> <laughs> the Whizback's good, but it's nothing on it. Nothing, you know, you play with yourself with a Whizback. Isn't that always the case? Mm. Right. Is that your top three? That's my top three. Passions. Do you have a top three? Do you, do you, do you, are you too afraid to get into this now? I don't blame you. I'm going to say top three toys I wanted and I oh. never got okay. when I was young. The first is a whiz back. <laughs> I had loads of those. They kept getting me them. I'm like, I want an Aerobee. This is <laughs> shit. You can't was one sw- off to make an Aerobee. Yeah. I was swimming in fucking whiz back. <laughs> you whiz back billionaire. <laughs> um, another good band name. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to write, make a note of these. The problem was, never got one in the 80s. Somebody threw one into the garden. And I didn't realise, unfortunately, until the 90s when I found it and all the rubber had worn away and it oh. would no longer work. That oh, is that's the worst excellent. birthday ever. <laughs> um... Number two, Hungry Hungry Hippos. Was obsessed with it when I was young. But you never had it? No. Oh. And it's fucking shit, as I discovered years later when I played it. You just slap a hippo. It's like a hippo abuse simulator. <laughs> Eat your fucking marbles. Eat your fucking marbles. <laughs> I was most distressed. And number one, yep. I haven't thought of yet. But Ooh. when I do, I shall tell you. Well, can you write us a letter? No. Oh, all right. I don't write. Oh, email? Maybe. All right, good. Well, do you know what I wanted? Stamps. What, what I wanted and never got was those... It was like a remote control car, and you told it to go get you an apple. Big, Big tracks. Track. Yeah, did you have one of those? No, I've got one now. Yeah. Oh. Living the dream. Is that cool or what? No. Go and get me an apple. <laughs> I don't think it had those buttons. <laughs> but yeah. There were more stages to the program were there? than that, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Actually, my number one, ZX Spectrum Plus 3 computer. Oh, interesting choice. Because it had a disk drive, which was like amazing and didn't load games from audio tape. Again, shit. They only released a couple of games, so it's pointless. But you have one now. Oh, do you want one Even now? Even I could not stoop so low. <laughs> as to oh. lick the bumhole of Alan Sugar and <laughs> use his awful proprietary diskettes. Oh, I see. I was, I was a child of the Amstrad CPC-464. Oh, my God. You were well into it, where Mr. Sugar's... Oh, premises. yeah. I, I could taste his tonsils. I was uh, that deeply involved in well, his work. Well, Colour monitor or black and white? There, it was green, a green sorry. screen. Oh. Green screen. I couldn't be flash with well, the colour monitor. Well, also, all the colour games, anyway, had three colours. So having a coloured monitor didn't make that much of a difference. Well, right, my really. parents were hippies, and I didn't, wasn't allowed to watch te- telly till I was ten. So fuck you with your, your things with screens. Can I give you my top three then? Yeah, it's going to be shit, everyone. No, okay? three Lego. Oh, yeah. Not oh Wait. my god, Wait. snooze nope. fest. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you've had your chance. 
Lego, and not the Harry Potter Star Wars set. Proper Lego in a box with different coloured shapes, with the four blocks, the three blocks, the lines, the flats. Proper building set of Lego that came in a big bucket that when you spilled on the carpet, your mum got angry about and made you clean up but because she always got her foot in it when she was hoovering. So, Lego. Thank you. Number two... Mousetrap, the board game. Oh, fuck. Oh, See? They're on my side. They don't care about your poncy I was a hippie child. I didn't get toys until I was 20 routine, <laughs> right? Mousetrap, because it's not only a board game that no one ever played anyway. They just built it yeah. and then set the trap off yeah. and then put it back together and set the trap off. How does that, that make it. that a good toy? Because How you... does it make it a good fucking toy? Because it had that... What's the name uh, of the guy? Uh, the, the, the guy... Uh, the mach- Sorry? No, 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 no. What's the name of the guy who did the drawings of the co- complicated machinery? There's a very famous Oh, word. Heath Robinson. Yes. It was Heath Robinson. No, it was not Heath Robinson. There's a very particular... Goldberg. Rube. 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 Now, that's the American form of... Yeah, because uh, there's an American Robinson. guy. Oh, Heath Robinson was Traitor. the... Uh, was well, the yeah, original the one. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. right. So, yeah, but everyone t- terms the Rube Gold. No, uh, only wrong people who look like you. Oh, well, then, that... that who that is winning? Perfectly, the doesn't doesn't top it? three. The Shh. guest is on my side. I'm going to hit Eli. Ah! Right. <laughs> it's all right. He, he has to resort it. to violence. He can't right. use his brain or his mouth. Right. No, okay, what's your top one? Oh, God, as top if we one. wanted to fucking hear. Nintendo Game Boy 1989. Oh, the best Classic. thing in the world. I'll tell you my story about the Game Boy. I always wanted one when I was a kid, but they were far too expensive. My family was far too poor to get one. But Quavers had a thing where if you bought Quavers, there was a little thing inside you could open and tear it. And if you could win a Quaver, right? You could win a Game Boy if you open the thing. Now, I ate about, over the, over the summer of school, uh, I ate about 56 bags of Quavers to try and win a Game Boy. And you know what? Didn't get one. But I did now have... You did get a scurvy? Yeah. And, weirdly, my hand smelled like it was up my arse the whole time. Because that's <laughs> the problem with Quavers, is it makes your hand smell like it's been up your arse. <laughs> And so I didn't get a Game Why Boy. Why didn't they use that as a tagline? <laughs> I don't know, but I did have a stinky finger. So yeah. that's my top three. Right? Can we now end the show? Yeah. We're just going to do a bit of housework now to end the show. I just want to say thank you to our guest tonight. Thank you for coming all the way down. He's simply called Stuart Ashens, and I want you to give him a massive round of applause for his appearance. Oh, God, I just hit him. Oh, God. Round of applause to Mr. Ashens. Uh, he has to shoot off. Oh, grab your bag. Don't forget your bag, sir. There he is. <laughs> this is how everyone should leave a stage. Coat on, bag. Have you got your keys and wallet, sir? You got your phone? Yeah. Good boy. Got your scarf? All right, good. We'll just wrap up tight. It's cold out tonight, all right? All right, give me a text when you get home so I know you're safe, all right? And... Ooh, oh. uh, goodbye, Mr. Ashens. I actually went in for the kiss then, and I got confused. There might have been a chance I touched your tongue by act. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so, if you want to email us and suggest things that we can do, we can eat, please do. You can email us at thegeekatorium at gmail.net and follow us on Twitter or find us on Facebook. Again, on Twitter, at The Geekatorium. Subscribe to our podcast if you're listening. If you found us on SoundCloud, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Stitcher. And finally, I can say goodnight. I want to say a round of applause to all your good selves. A round of applause for all your good selves for coming along tonight. You've been an awesome, awesome, awesome audience. And as always, we play out with a piece of music to make sure you get out the door quickly. Eli, what are we playing out with tonight? It's a tune called Ganges Delta by Oko Becker. Danji's Gelter by Oko Belka. I don't know if I said that right, but that's what he's playing out with. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. I've been Paul. That's been Eli. You've been awesome. Mr. Music, will you play? (laughs) 